Hello everyone, we welcome you once again to Health and Family. I'm your host, Shay Dawn Burgess. A while back we did a program on bullying. We touched briefly on the subject of cyberbullying. We wanted to revisit that subject by taking a more in-depth look at cyberbullying. We will be looking at what it entails to be a digital citizen. Do you have what it takes? We're going to find out with our guest today, Ms. Sloan Wilson, who works with the Department of ICT Policy and Innovation. And we're so pleased to get an opinion on this subject matter from a Mount St. Agnes Senior School student, Mr. Noah brady Soares. We welcome both of you to Health you. and Family. And you've been with us before, Ms. Yes. Wilson, so welcome back. So let's start off with what exactly is a di digital citizen? A digital citizen is any person who engages in society through the use of technology. Okay, so that's a lot of us then. Yes. Right. And so where, where did this term come from? Because it's a relatively new term. It is a relatively new term. Um, the term, I guess, just evolved mm -hmm. with the use of technology and with society moving all of the things that we do mm -hmm. onto the internet and, right. you know, things like that. Yeah, I actually teach it with some of my students because I think it's important awesome. that um, all of us know what to do, the do's and don'ts on the internet. Um, I wanted us to start off with uh, you telling us about a group that you're involved in in the capacity of your position with the ICT policy. Go ahead. So I work with the CyberTips team mm -hmm. and we are in all of the schools each year. We go in and we do workshops with the students on digital citizenship, what it means to be a good digital citizen. We also help to deal with some of the negative issues that arise from social media and each year we host a conference for mm -hmm. students on the topic of digital citizenship. Okay. Um, one of those students that we work with, we have a student steering committee, is Noah brady Soares from Mount St. Agnes Academy. Okay, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited because most of our guests are not as young as yeah. you, so I'm really excited that you could, you could come on the program. So um, social media is big with your generation. Tell yes. us about it. How come it's so huge with, with you guys? What's going um, on I that? believe it's extremely um, popular with my with my age group mm -hmm. um, because it's very powerful um, if it's not you know what I mean snapchat or if it's not Instagram then it didn't happen and so we live in this society where we have to see this photo of oh you know I, mean, I was in New York here snapchat this moment mm -hmm. and it's very important for us to communicate with each other um, you know what I mean growing up I know my for example my mother was landline you know what I mean you called right, and right. If, then it was that and then now it's you know we have an iPhone and we can snapchat or we can FaceTime and it's very important for my age group I think to be connected uh, through so many different social media branches because this is how we I guess roll pretty much you know what I mean that's how we live and in posting on Instagram and, and putting a story on Snapchat, it allows for us to see what each other's daily lives are. Mm -hmm. And it's very important because sometimes it can be positive and then it can get into that negative aspect where if something goes wrong at school, then it comes home with you, not only in your emotions, but then on your phone. And that's when you can get into the issue of people invading your privacy or people, um, you know what I mean, continuing to hurt you in a way that you know, is physical, but it is emotional and verbal because it's on their phone. So social media is popular because it's good for to connect with each other, but it's also popular because it's an easy way to target the weaker people. Okay, and you actually set us up perfectly for cyberbullying. Yeah. So, um, Ms. Sloan, talk to us about um, cyberbullying, what it entails. We did kind of define it a little bit last time, but just to remind our audience members. So cyberbullying can be a pretty broad term, mm -hmm. but the general definition of cyberbullying is the harassment mm -hmm or belittling of someone else using any online entity, whether it be social media like Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, or some people bully each other on Skype. Um, there's How do we do this? I, I'm, just, I'm just like, I'm sorry. Obviously, I'm of an older generation, but. I don't even realize that they're doing it, you know? So for instance, I could post a picture of myself mm -hmm. and somebody doesn't like the shirt that I'm wearing. So they make a negative comment. Why would she wear that shirt? And, or, mm -hmm. and then somebody else feeds off of that person's comment and it just becomes a long laundry list of negativity. That's cyberbullying. A lot of people also don't realize that me posting an image of you mm -hmm. without your consent is considered cyberbullying as well and is against the law. Okay, all right. And so why are we doing this, Noah? What's going on? What's... Um, and it's not just your generation, but let's be, let's be real. Your yeah. generation is kind of... Very spearheaded it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, unfortunately, my generation has, you know, like you said, spearheaded it and has made it 
um, to the grounds that it is today. Mm -hmm. um, they've taken it to that level where unfortunately law enforcement gets involved. Mm -hmm. um, people tend to do some things that you know they wouldn't necessarily do mm -hmm. um, when it comes to social media, meaning that they might become, you know what I mean, um, socially awkward, they might become detached from, you know what I mean, social groups from school. And so what happens is, is that we lose the focus on being positive with each other. And it goes from the phone to the computer to the language we use at school because, oh, you know what I mean, so-and-so has this shirt on in a post she posted last night, but she always complains that she doesn't look nice. But instead of saying she doesn't look nice, why don't we say, you know what, that looks great on you. And some people get so enthralled and excited by hurting somebody else. And that's what I don't get. What is with that? We, we do it because some people are insecure. Yeah. Um, maybe they were bullied um, younger themselves. Yeah. Um, and so as a person who has experienced cyberbullying, mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that it is very aggressive. Some people can be very aggressive. Um, and sometimes you have to detach and you have to get off of it um, in order to save your sanity and um, yourself because mm -hmm. if you become so enthralled and, and you just let it happen and you continue to let it happen it will destroy you so you have to take a step back and realize that your life is more important than those around you right okay another thing to remember mm -hmm. also is that the internet gives you a certain level of anonymity right so many times a young person or even an adult will say something online that they would never say to somebody's face right. So it gives you something to hide behind. So when you're hiding behind the screen, you kind of feel more empowered to say whatever it is that you want to say. I will disagree with the fact that Noah thinks that it's his generation that's spearheading it. Mm -hmm. To be quite honest with you, I see quite a lot of cyberbullying mm -hmm. in my generation okay. and above, um, especially during, you see it during events and times in Bermuda, mm -hmm. like election time or mm -hmm. holidays and different mm -hmm. things like that. So. It's important that our adults understand that they need to lead by example mm. because a lot of times a young person will say it's okay for me to post what I'm posting because my parent posts something similar and my parent would never do anything wrong. So even though our kids are older, so for Noah's generation, you know, he's older than some of the younger kids that mm. are using these right, technologies, right. he still would look to his parents and say, well, if my mama can do it, I can do it too. Right. So I think a lot of times we look at our children as um, sponges only when they're little, but they're mm -hmm. still sponges as they go into adulthood as well. Okay, good, good stuff. So Noah, you've been bullied on, yeah. on the internet. Can yeah. you give us a little something about that? Not, don't go into um, detail, detail, but tell us just a, a scenario and then how did you react to it? What did you do? Did you go to your parents or? or? Um, well, one of the scenarios um, that involved when I actually got cyber bullied was um, people, I'm a very outgoing person. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I, I don't stick to social norms. I'll be 100% honest, um, and I love to wear clothes that I find awesome, um, and I do. And so people would pick on me a lot um, for wearing for the clothes that I wore, mm -hmm. for not being in the latest fashion trends, um, but also for being a smart kid. You know, people who are smart tend to get picked on because they're not in the popular group, as they call it. Mm -hmm. And due to that, we but we rule the world, we rule the world. exactly. <laughs> so we tend, uh, people tended to, you know, I mean, call me names. Um, they would uh, follow my Instagram or they, you know, I mean, add me on Snapchat, and they would send me messages. Um, or people, even at school, would tend to just pick on me as, you know, what I mean, an ordinary person. But the the worst times was the late night messages that people would send you. The and that's what really affected me because I was at home, I was in my room, I was by myself. And it wasn't until um, my mom, who goes through my phone regularly, okay. um, uh, just to make sure that I'm not doing anything crazy or, you know what I mean, and irresponsible, um, saw these messages. And she came and approached me and, I mean, she was like, this isn't right. And we had a really long conversation about it. Um, and she went to the school and she confronted these people. Um, after speaking to my principal, and from that, it really changed. Um, they didn't realize what they did wrong was wrong. Right. They didn't realize how you know what I mean how much trouble they could get in, right. um, because cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. You can get in a lot of trouble with the law. Like right. that's serious. 
But how did she know who the children were? Did, if they don't... um, because they weren't that smart when they were putting, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, when they were uh, using fake accounts or when they were um, trying to hide behind, like Sloan said, you know, I mean, the an anonymity of uh, the internet. And trust me, there are so many other ways to find out who these people are. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, they came forward afterwards because my mom is, she's pretty serious when she gets mad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Oh, well, I'm just trying to see a mom going there. Okay, which one of you lot is messing with my child? Uh, so which, which is the most popular social media for you, Noah, currently now? Um, I'm sure probably you. Snapchat. Um, I use Snapchat a lot. Um, I have some pretty awesome stories, I'll be honest. I like to, um, and I use it in a way that's positive for the island, but as well for me. Mm -hmm. um, I like to take pictures of the sunsets and, and I go to the beach and hanging out with my friends um, because it's important to really include where we live, in my opinion, into our social media branch. And that's really what is very popular with my um, age group, is you'll see a lot of people do bikini pictures on the beach and all those great things and cliff jumping and stuff, but that's also where you open yourself up to be a target Sweet. to this cyber bullying. Because, oh, she doesn't look cute in that bikini or she's too, you know what I mean? And in all honesty, for me, when it comes to a guy criticizing a woman, I have a problem with that. Because you know what? Not every person, not every woman is gonna fit society's beautiful little skinny yeah. physique petite mm -hmm. thing, no. In my opinion, every woman is size sexy and that's the way you have to roll. Right. I'm just saying. You, you said a mouthful. <laughs> you guys are having a conference coming up, and, and it will be a yearly conference. Yeah. So talk to us about that, what it entails. The Digital Citizenship Conference was planned by a group of students to make sure that the program met their needs. So this conference is meant to give the students a voice. Um, the final product from the conference will be a student bill of rights. Okay. Um, each year, the project that the students work on will change. So this year they're focusing on things like the rise of antisocial behavior on social media and gang involvement. They'll be talking about restorative justice and they'll be talking about how parents, adults in their lives like mentors and coaches can learn how to become a trusted adult. Mm -hmm. So these things will be taught to the adults by the young people. It's right. a fantastic opportunity for them to express where they are, what the law means to them, how they're affected by these laws. We have the students working with mentors from all facets. Um, so we have them working with some lawmakers, we have them working with graphic designers, we have them working with the police service, we have them working with child and family services, and quite a few other entities as well to make sure that they are subject matter experts in the areas that they will be talking about. All right. So we're going to take a break right now, and when we come back, we're going to talk with Ms. Wilson and Mr. Noah about more about this conference and what else it entails. Okay, so we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back. Thanks for coming on back. We are talking with Ms. Wilson from the ICT Policy and Innovation, as well as Mr. Noah Brady Soares from Mount St. Agnes. I love your name. Thank it you. sounds like you're going to be in politics, maybe? Maybe right. one day. Maybe. All right. So when we left, you were talking about uh, the conference, so a yearly conference, and um, just delve a little bit more into that, and then we're going to pass it on to Noah to tell us what his uh, contribution is to the conference. Well, the conference, again, is planned and executed by students. Mm -hmm. um, there is a student steering committee that meets regularly to plan the conference. The conference will give students the opportunity to have a voice regarding the digital issues that they are facing. Mm -hmm. So there will be panel discussions and workshops on how to be a trusted friend. Mm -hmm. Restorative justice is a very important topic very that the huge, students yeah. um, are really interested in. Mm -hmm. um, we will also have some of the lawmakers in the room to sit and talk with um, students about the different issues that they're facing and how the law affects them and what they feel or think about the current legislation in place. We also have a guest speaker, Miss Dina Pukio, coming down from the UK. 
She represents The Wrap Project, which is a project that travels around the world talking about digital issues with young people. Okay, and so Noah, what's your contribution to this conference? Um, I sit on the, the student steering board, as Ms. Wilson said, um, and I spearhead um, alongside some of the other students with it um, to try and plan and execute this awesome conference that we've got uh, ready for our you know, young people of Bermuda. Um, most importantly, I try my best to give as much information as I can. Um, I, you know what I mean, help put the surveys together that we are going to be potentially administering to the students. Mm -hmm. Well, I shouldn't say administering, it makes it sound like medicine. Um, we're going to try and, you know what I mean, get them to take. But the most important thing is, is that we come together as the youth of Bermuda to try and help each other um, to really figure out what laws need to be put in place or, or what, you know what I mean, Bill of Rights, as Ms. Wilson said, that we can create to stop. Um, this bullying and because it's unnecessary it's wrong mm -hmm. as a young generation we should be united to take on the next you know I mean steps and and the current situation to take it to better heights for our coming generation for our young brothers and sisters mm -hmm. who need guidance in social media and especially in digital citizenship definitely a premiere in the making <laughs> alrighty so what are some do's and don'ts on on social media Ms. Wilson oh there are Laundry well, lists of okay, do's and do, don'ts. Like, all right, let, let's talk about some of the don'ts. Okay. Let's focus yeah, in on let's that. Just yeah, <laughs> but let's just, because I think most of us, you go on, I go on to do research and, and to communicate, uh, just email. I'm still doing the email thing, but, you know, things of that nature. So if people may be doing that, okay. But what are, where, where are the problems arising from besides, I know the cyberbullying, but specifically, if you could talk on that for us. Well, to begin, the first thing is to always have a strong password for yeah. any social media app or right. site that you're using. Mm -hmm. um, we recommend that your password include capital letters, special characters, and numbers, and that it is at least eight to 10 digits long. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have a strong password. It's also important not to share your personal information. When going on a website, if you're shopping or you know, doing anything of that nature, make sure that the website is secure by locating the little padlock in the top left-hand corner of the URL. Okay. Um, if that padlock is not there, that means your information that you're entering into that website is not safe. Okay. Websites pay to have a security certificate. Right. So if they take that extra step to secure themselves, you know that you're working with somebody that is legitimate. Right. Um, it's also important for you not to take pictures that could not to post pictures that could give away too much personal information. Mm -hmm. For instance, posting a picture of your child right outside your house next to your mailbox mm -hmm. that has your house number on it because now we all know where you live. Right. It's important for you not to post pictures of other people. Again, I cannot reiterate enough. It is not legal for you to post an image of someone other than yourself unless you have that person's consent. Mm. So if your child is in a group photo, for instance, my son had a what do you call it, laser tag party? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all the kids had their camo with the little grease under the eyes. They looked like little G.I. Joes. And I put them all together and took a group photo and I posted it. One child's mom requested that I take the image down because she did not want a picture of her son on social media holding any sort of weapon. Mm -hmm. And I had to respect that and take the entire image down mm -hmm. because she did not give me permission to post her son's image mm. because of the type of image that it was. So it's important that we remember that. Um, another don't is don't share someone else's information on okay. social media. Okay. It's important that you don't talk about others, that you don't share anyone else's personal information. And especially for the young people, I encourage them and implore them not to share photos of themselves, like photos of their bodies, especially if the photos could be considered of a sexual nature. Okay. You want to add, add, add on to that? Um, a do, I like to put, I like the positive side. Okay. Um, the, a do is to post positive, um, uplifting um, messages or images. Um, if you're having a good time, make sure that it's an appropriate, um, you know, having a good time. Don't include alcohol and don't include, you know what I mean, any illegal substances in your photos because coming soon, and especially for me as a person who is going to university, um, they will look through your social media yeah, portfolios. Yeah. Uh, do is to make sure that you have positive, appropriate content on all social media pages because if you don't, the universities will question you on that mm -hmm. and it could mess you up. Yeah, I've, I've actually heard of that and um, people have been denied entry mm -hmm. uh, to, to universities or even jobs yes. because of, of their social media accounts. 
Wow, that's something serious. So we did want to emphasize cyberbullying. So um, let's talk about what a parent or caregiver can do to, to prevent their kid being cyberbullied or like I think his mom checked in on his, on his messages and so forth, which is an excellent thing to do. What, would, what advice would you give to parents today? There's nothing a parent can really do, and I'm also speaking as a parent, right. um, to prevent their child from being cyberbullied. Oh, if your child well, has course. access to social media, right. they've put themselves out there. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do is listen. When your child comes to tell you that something is happening to them, mm -hmm. listen. And listen to understand, not just to hear. Um, believe them. Many times young people do not tell their parents or trusted adults what's going on mm -hmm. for fear of the repercussions. My mom is going to think this is my fault. My mom is going to take my phone. My mom is going to take my access to the internet away. When most times it's not their fault, but because we don't listen to understand, mm -hmm. we don't gather that information quite readily. So I would say listen first, believe the child, and then take action. The first thing I would recommend is that the parent take screenshots mm -hmm. of all of the negative behavior. Now, if the child is being bullied by someone at school, my first recommendation would be to approach the administration at the school. Right. Depending on the nature mm -hmm. of the attack, you can escalate it to the Bermuda Police Service. Um, and also depending on the nature of the attack, if it's of a sexual nature, Child and Family Services will get involved That's as well as the Bermuda Police Service. So there are legal recourses that parents do have, but if it is something that is happening at school, I recommend bringing the school into the loop first mm -hmm. because that means that the school has an issue as well that they need to deal with. And, and the school could eventually be, if, if it continues on, could the school be held responsible for, for the cyberbullying to a certain extent? The school cannot be held responsible, but most schools do have an anti-bullying policy. I know that MSA, for instance, yes. mm -hmm. has a very stringent policy. They have a no tolerance for any kind of bullying at all. Mm -hmm. um, and most other schools on the island are following suit. Right. All right, so you, we were talking about the survey that you're going to be administering. Um, one of the questions, I was looking through the survey and we were talking about the social media accounts that some of the young people have. What is the average number of uh, social media accounts that uh, a young person has? Um, roughly, I would, I would, I would guesstimate um, about one to five accounts pre primarily. Um, because not everybody's account is the same. Mm -hmm. So like I have uh, one, so I have one Instagram account, I have one Snapchat account, I have a Facebook account. Um, so, and not everybody likes to use the same, you know, username or, or so forth for that because in my, from my experience, I don't have the same username because then people can easily follow you and can easily, you know what I mean? Isn't it, aren't you trying to get people to follow you? I am, but I have very, I, I control my accounts very well. Mm -hmm. I have um, fantastic privacy settings where if you are not a close friend of mine, you cannot see you know what I mean certain posts that I have, especially on Facebook, because it's not for public knowledge. It's not for public you know what I mean profiling view. Mm -hmm. So it's a very and it's also very important with these accounts to control who can see what, because if somebody who doesn't follow you can see everything, then what's the sense of having people follow you? It's important to control your accounts with privacy settings, especially mm -hmm. on Facebook, on Instagram, because you're trying to protect yourself from you know, predators or people who are going to hurt you or people who are going to you know, cyber bully you in those natures. How many hours do you spend on your social media accounts on a, on a daily um, basis? Be honest. <laughs> yeah, um, quite a, I would say a, a quite a few hours. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I see, and I'm not criticizing the young yeah. people, but I just see them with the phone, just just oh, yeah. 24 we're glued seven. To it. Yeah, we're glued I mean, to really. It. Um, when, most times it's um, sometimes it's for homework. A lot of times it's for social media use. I'm texting with my friends. The phones for homework. Oh yeah, we, that's how we can pass along notes if we miss something in class, or especially in my class, um, in my senior class. Just showing my age. We, we, right. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> send notes to each other, um, we help each other out with homework, um, we FaceTime a lot to make sure that everybody gets all the assignments in. So we use it in a positive way, but I mean, sometimes we slack off and you know I mean? we'll go and we'll watch some YouTube videos or we'll play Xbox. So it's just, I mean, I use it more time, about eight, I wouldn't say eight hours a day, but about at least six. So would you say that uh, the social media accounts are for educational purpose or for entertainment? Probably entertainment, more, um, so, entertainment. more so entertainment. Mm -hmm. Edu 
there are very few educational social media <laughs> platforms. I'm um, going to interject. Okay. I actually called into um, Magic 102 last night. They were talking about this exact topic. Oh, wow. I um, didn't copy them. About, <laughs> yeah, this was a long time ago. Okay. About how can social media be integrated into the classroom in a positive way. And right. there are many ways that the exact same social media sites that Noah uses, like Snapchat and mm -hmm. Instagram and YouTube, can be integrated into the classroom in a positive way by teachers and students. So we should keep that in mind as well. Yes. All right. So f guys, unfortunately our time is up, but I wanted you guys to just have a final word on um, being a digital citizen, um, emphasis on cyberbullying. So I'll give it to you, Ms. Wilson, and then you can finish off. It is important to do your best to be a good digital citizen. We wouldn't go down the street and rob a bank, so we, wouldn't, we shouldn't rob somebody online. Mm -hmm. And it's important to remember that everything that you put on the internet is there forever. Yeah, that's a scary And it's searchable part. by yeah. someone somewhere in the world. Right. So it's important to remember that what we're putting out there is what we want the world to see. So it's important to put out positive messages, not negative messages. Right. No. Um, my, my most important thing is um, if you're going to send somebody a, a mean message or a hurtful message, would you show your mom or your dad that message before you click send? Because it's important to know that those people have lives too and those, you know, I mean, the victim that you might be targeting has emotions as well, just mm -hmm. like you. And it's important to know that, what that when you send that message, that can change your life forever. And it can change that other person's life forever as well. All right. Thank you, guys. Ms. Wilson. Still don't remember me, huh, from Elliot? No. Oh, my goodness. I feel so bad. No, it's a pleasure meeting you. you. A lot of food for thought in this program. Let's face it. Social media looks like it's here to stay. As responsible citizens, we must guide our youth into utilizing this medium for the betterment of humankind and not the detriment. If we truly wish to be better digital citizens, we must practice what we preach. A big thanks to our guest today, Ms. Sloan Wilson of ICT policy and innovation, and our young person today, emphasizing young, Mr. Noah brady Soares, who will be leading us older folks into the correct way of being a digital citizen. On behalf of Health and Family, I'm Shadon Burgess. Thanks for joining us.